several new things in the Bible draw us to God. A new covenant defines our relationship with God. A new way to approach God defines our worship of God. A new birth defines how each person is to be saved and become part of the family of God. Many more new things come to those who do choose to respond in obedient faith, drawing near to God. The New Testament speaks of new creatures. A new creature is a person who has undergone that new birth and is now in the kingdom of God, the church. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Paul affirms, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. A person gets into Christ by being baptized into Christ Jesus, says Romans 6 and verse 3. Those who have been baptized into Christ have clothed themselves with Christ. Galatians 3 verse 27. By one Spirit, then, we have all been baptized into one body. 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 13. Those who have been born again, as we spoke of this morning from John chapter 3, have been baptized, putting on the new man or the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. Ephesians 4 verse 24. This new self is being renewed to the true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. Colossians 3 and verse 10. Those who have put on the new man are new creatures who must walk now in the newness of life. Romans 6 and verse 4. While walking in the newness of life, that new creature follows the instructions of 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lump, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ our Passover also has been sacrificed. A new creature cuts out the bad things from his or her past living while continuing to live in the Savior who gave them a fresh start with this new life as a new creature. Therefore, the new creatures set their affections on things above. They set their mind on things above, not on the things of the earth. Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2. The Bible declares that God's people wear a new name. God often changed the names of those who belong to Him. He changed Abram's name to Abraham, saying, For I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. Genesis 17 and verse 5. Soon after, he changed Sarai's name to Sarah. Genesis 17, verse 15. I will bless her, and she will be a mother of nations. Kings of peoples will come from her. He changed the name of Jacob to be that of Israel. Genesis 32, verse 28. You have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. God's people were to be called by a new name. They would lose their shameful name of the past and receive a new name. Isaiah chapter 62 and verse 2 says, The nations will see your righteousness and all kings your glory and you will be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will designate. There in that same chapter, Isaiah 62 and verse 12 reveals that they would be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. Many rabbis and teachers of Jesus' day would have disciples, but Christ had disciples who were called after His name. For an entire year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught considerable numbers, and the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. Acts 11 and verse 26. Agrippa was one who was almost persuaded to become a Christian. 
Acts 26 and verse 28. But the suffering that Christians face often deters some from taking that new name. Peter said, if anyone suffers as a Christian, he is not to be ashamed, but is to glorify God in this name. 1 Peter 4 and verse 16. Salvation is in no other name than the name of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 declares, There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The collective assembly of all these new creatures should wear the name of Christ because she is the church that belongs to Christ. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 through 33. This new name then tells us who we follow after. Jesus is the one we follow, and Jesus has revealed a new covenant, or a new commandment, rather. This new commandment is a commandment of love. In John 13, verse 34, Jesus uh, commanded that His disciples love one another just as He has loved them, just as He has loved us. This is not the first time that love was enjoined in a command from God. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 18 commanded God's people to love their neighbor as themselves. The commandment to love one another was from the beginning, John wrote in 2 John verse 5. What then made this commandment a new commandment? It was the depth of such love. Ephesians 5 and verse 25 speaks of Christ's love for the church. Those new creatures wearing His name. He loved them so much that He had given Himself up for her. Ephesians 5 verse 25. For the purpose, verse 26, so that he might sanctify, set apart her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Transformed lives of converts, these new creatures, shout about the effectiveness of God's grace revealed in the new covenant. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 6. The depth of love for one another revealed in the new covenant or the new commandment proves that we belong to Christ. The Bible discloses wonderful promises of a future for us. It discloses the new heavens and a new earth. The expression, the new heavens and a new earth, appears four times in the Bible. Isaiah 65 and verse 17 speaks of it as a created place where former things will not be remembered or come to mind. Isaiah 66 and verse 22 says that this new heavens and a new earth will endure forever before the Lord. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13 tells that the New heavens and a new earth are a promise from God that we look for in which righteousness dwells. John himself was able to see a glimpse. He was able to see it in a vision. He saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there is no longer sea. And he saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. Revelation 21, verses 1 and 2. The residents in this new heavens and new earth will enjoy new associations. They will forever be in the immediate presence of God. They will be with Christ their Savior. They will be with the angels of God and they will be with all the redeemed of all the ages. In this new heavens and new earth, new songs will be sung. They sang a new song, a song of praise to God for His wonderful work of redemption. Revelation 5 verses 9 through 14. Verses 11 and 13 of Revelation 5 identify the singers as many angels redeemed sinners, and every creature in heaven, on earth, in the sea, and under the sea. 
illustrating the universality of worship and praise that will be given there. A new song was sung before the throne. A new song that no one else could learn. Revelation 14 and verse 3. Those in the new heavens and new earth will have a new body. His new body will be one of a spiritual nature. 1 Corinthians 15 verse 44. For flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit in the imperishable. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. The new heavens and a new earth will be in a new location. Revelation 21 and verse 2. For the current heavens will be destroyed by burning, and the elements will melt with intense heat. 2 Peter 3, verse 12. 2 Peter 3, verse 7 reveals by the Lord's word... The present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Peter wrote there in 2 Peter 3 verse 10 that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. The new heavens and a new earth will be a place where God's people serve Him eternally. Revelation 22 and verse 3. It brings us to our reading this morning of 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed at the last time. God the Father, according to His great mercies, gave us a new covenant to show us the new way to approach Him through the new birth in His Son. By our response to the offer of God in Christ, we can become the new creatures wearing a new name and fulfilling the new commandment so that we can one day enter the new heavens and a new earth. If new things thrill us, we should prepare for heaven. Because heaven is filled with many things that will be new. To prepare for heaven, we need to become new creatures who live a life in Christ with a new and living hope. So have you been baptized? Have you been born again, born of water and the Spirit? Do you live a life now that is in accordance with Christ's will? Do you live according to His power, allowing Him to live through you? Do you have the new life and the living hope that you will be raised as Jesus Christ Himself was raised? And that you will obtain an inheritance that does not perish, that will not become defiled, and that does not fade away. All of these new things can be ours if we accept Christ. You see, if new things thrill you, then the best is yet to be. God has many promises for those who belong to Him. Tonight, He has a promise for you that if you are outside of Christ, you can come to Him in obedient faith, trusting and believing in Him and the power of His Son's blood to wash your sins away. If you are a child of God, having been baptized, you are that new creature. Then He promises to forgive your sins as long as you will walk in the light as He is in the light. 1 John 1 verse 7. Tonight, you have a golden opportunity to make things new, to start afresh, to get a clean slate once again. 
God has made it available, and he's inviting you to accept his invitation as we stand and as we sing.